We've heard about a lot of different drug makers around the world trying to join the fight against COVID-19. And this week, we highlighted Bausch Health, the former Valiant, which uh, signaled it received the go-ahead from Health Canada on a clinical study for one of its drugs to determine its effectiveness in patients with COVID-19. We're joined now by the CEO of that company, Bausch Health, Joseph Papa, uh, on the phone line with a little bit more. Uh, Mr. Papa, thanks very much for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure to be here today. Um, we're talking about uh, a product called Virazol, and uh, maybe you can shed a little bit more light uh, on potentially why this could function as a treatment for COVID-19. Sure. Let me step back a little bit. This is clearly an unprecedented time. I've been in the healthcare industry for 37 years, and we asked ourselves at Bausch Healthcare, how can we best contribute to this global pandemic around the world? So we, we felt that one of the ways we could do this is looking at a clinical trial with virazol, ribovirin for inhalation, in combination with standard of care therapy to look for the treatment of hospitalized patients with respiratory distress from COVID-19. Uh, the advantage that ribovirin has is that it is a nebulization, which means you deliver it directly to the lungs, which is one of the obvious areas of greatest concern for patients with COVID-19. Uh, ribovirin is a antiviral product. It inhibits the RNA-dependent polymerase, which stops the virus from replicating. So we think it has potential here. Obviously, we have to get the data, and we've been working with Health Canada to put together an appropriate protocol to check for that uh, and determine whether or not it can help patients. Yeah, and, and, um, and, and thanks for that background. In terms of helping patients, maybe you can shed a little light. I mean, are we talking about reducing potentially some of the symptoms tied to COVID-19, or, or is this something that could um, uh, potentially uh, really get you on, on the road to recovery? Well, we, we hope. It obviously will get patients on the road to recovery. These are hospitalized patients. These are patients that are very sick. They have respiratory distress. Our belief is that if we can reduce the replication or produce antiviral uh, product that can help reduce the virus load in the body, that can help the patients get back to on the road to recovery much faster. And, and that's what we'll be testing in a controlled clinical trial to determine uh, whether or not we will be successful. But we think the antiviral activity, especially because we're delivering it uh, direct to the lungs, where the, the biggest problem is for these patients, uh, could potentially help us help patients to recover quicker. Mr. Papa, given that we've heard a lot about different clinical trials these days, uh, can you just um, explain to us uh, what, what goes into that, um, how that process plays out? Is it playing out any differently? Uh, obviously, you mentioned you've been in the industry for, for many, many years. Uh, with respect to the clinical um, phase, um, how are things playing out today? Um, what, what can you tell us about that? So we're looking at this that's truly on a global scale. Uh, we are looking at, for example, in Europe, uh, we're looking at we've ramped up our production of chloroquine and azithromycin to help the patients in Europe. Uh, that's another potential avenue for helping patients. We, we need additional clinical trial data, to be clear, but we're seeking that. Uh, we're also looking at our one of our products, Zyfax, and another product uh, that could potentially control the GI symptoms that go along with COVID-19 patients, and obviously uh, our Virazol pet product that we're talking to both Health Canada and in the U.S., we're talking to the FDA about looking at Virazol because we know it has um, the ability to help uh, children, uh, and we, in the case of uh, those infants and young children with severe lower respiratory tract infections due to um, respiratory viruses. So we're, we're looking at trying to figure out which are the best ways to help patients around the world. Uh, it's not going to be a single uh, one product, we think. There could be a lot of different avenues that we will pursue in order to try to, as I said, ask ourselves that question, how can we best help? And, and that's what we've put forth here as potential avenues with uh, the chloroquine and zithromycin in Europe. Uh, we're looking at, as I said, Zyfaxin in the United States. We're looking at the Virazol in the U.S. and Canada. And we're going to continue to try to help in any way we possibly can to help eradicate this global pandemic.
And, uh, and quickly before we let you go, Mr. Papa, just coming back to Virusol, um, if the clinical study uh, is successful, um, what, what would you be thinking in terms of the timing of finding out um, whether it's successful or not, A, and B, what would come next after that? So this is an open-label design where we're going to treat 25 to 50 patients in the study. Uh, once we get, and we'll treat the patients for approximately six days or until uh, we feel the virus all can be discontinued because they've made progress. Uh, once we get that data, if it's if it's promising, uh, it will then it will initiate an additional tri clinical trial uh, with additional patient numbers to help us to make determinations on uh, what best that we can do. But we clearly will, if it's successful, uh, want to make sure we share the data widely because of the ability to help patients is really what it comes down to uh, from our mission statement.